Hello everyone, glad you could make it here today. In this second installment of the High Grade Witch from Mercury series, we'll take a look at the... The High Grade Begwir Bayou. This video was an interesting one to make, as my local hobby shop first stocked these last September, and I planned on picking this kit up for my first Witch from Mercury video before it sold out within 12 hours. But, after only 4 months of waiting, we can finally build and paint this, so let's take a look at what's in that box. <laughs> This kit has great box art which is consistent among the series I own kits 1 to 9 at time of recording, and it's gonna be a problem for storage since I saved the boxes I think look cool which is all of them. Inside are 4 main runners with 2 smaller ones for the clear parts and bayonet blades, you also get a set of stickers and some wire. The wire allows you to display the non-kinetic pods, those ball things on the backpack in flight, and there's also a stand for one of the pods. The kit does have two pods, which means waiting for the Witch for Mercury weapon stand to come out, or you could just buy a second kit. Just like the Lubris, this kit is very simple, but not in a bad way. Think simple more along the lines of thoughtful design and engineering. As a whole, the Big Weir has less going on than the Lubris, but that means more articulation. It can do splits and squats like nobody's business, and there's even an unexpected ab crunch. I do wish there was a secondary elbow joint, and this kit also suffers from a lack of hand parts. It's also thinner than expected and has trouble standing up. Overall, I do think this kit isn't as strong as the Lubris kit is, but the main selling point would be the unconventional design. That being said, there's still a lot to enjoy, and I've honestly been spoiled by the large amounts of modern gumpla I build for these videos. Bandai did a great job on this kit, and it's one that I can easily recommend. I primed with Mr. Finishing Surfacer and sprayed a coat of Tamiya TS-17 Gloss Aluminum. First are the frame parts which I'm painting purple. The Beguerbeo has a purple frame which is pretty unique, and while I'm really trying not to do any basic repaints for this series, I have painted a frame purple before, and I like the result enough to reuse it here. I think I've used this purple mixture on multiple projects, but to be honest, I don't really reference the mixing ratios I include in these videos, it's more for you guys, but I haven't bought any new purples for this project so I wouldn't be surprised. Frames are an interesting way to introduce a pop of color to an area which is usually overlooked, at least for high grades. Of course, depending on your preferences, you can adjust your colors to be more or less vibrant, and at this stage in the process, it may seem too vibrant for a frame color, but as you'll see later on, that may be what we need. After a bunch of tedious frame painting, I finally get to paint the main body. This is my first time using this color, Vallejo's Grey Green, which isn't the most appropriate name since it's not very green. It is most certainly grey, and a little darker than the basalt grey I normally use for frames and mechanical detail. I like how it looks, but my bottle of paint wasn't the easiest to work with, being a little thick and almost in that clumpy sort of range. I'm heavily referencing the Begwer Bear's color scheme, and using this color to replace all the light purple areas. This paint isn't the most neutral grey out there, and there is some sort of hue to it that I can't really place. I want to say that there is a tiny, tiny amount of green in it, just because of the name, and maybe I'll lighten a small amount of it with white to test that out. Although I like this grey, it honestly isn't that much different from something like the salt grey. Because of this, I don't really see myself using it very much in the future except as a last resort. But it could be used to do some dark grey color separation if I ever feel like it. Now I am painting the main color on this kit, German grey which is supposed to represent black. I've talked about this before, but I like using German grey instead of black. It's a lot easier to get a hold of, and at this scale, gives off the illusion of black quite nicely. It's also easier to paint than black is, since some black paints end up being so dark, 
you don't have a good idea of when they're dry enough to add a second coat. I've chosen to paint the kit in these dark greys because I had the concept of a Gundam Hunter. After all, it is shown killing two Gundams off screen and possibly many more mobile suits off screen. I think the colors would visually camouflage the big weir quite well among the vastness of space and make it like an unseen alien entity that you don't notice until it's too late. I have said before that I rarely plan things on my builds, although I do work in general concepts like this, and do develop these concepts before I start painting. Not every idea I have makes it though, I actually thought of using pure black in geometric segments on these areas to add to the camouflage look, but thought it would be too busy. But I guess one of you can use that idea if you want to paint your own Big Rebeo. It's time to add decals, which is a step that I was super excited for. This is what delayed the Witch for Mercury build series, not the procurement of the actual kits themselves, which was pretty unexpected. Much like the Lubris, I was planning on using what I found until I learned that G Rework just came out with the decal set for the kit. I am a fan of the creative liberties the GU Rework team took, especially since these kits come with no markings whatsoever. I do like the large amount of generic stencils in grey and white, although I wish the Dominicus emblem was in different colours since it disappeared when put on top of the German grey, but that is entirely my fault and ties into what I was talking about with only really knowing general concepts. I had no idea the German grey would eat up some of the decals, and in some cases, I put decals on the lighter grey when they would actually show up on the darker grey. Decals can really transform the look of a project, and I make it a point to have decals for every kit I plan on painting, which is 90% of the kits I buy. Spending the time and money is definitely worth it though. I let the decals dry for several hours, and now I'm doing physical chipping. It's nothing out of the ordinary, although there are a few things I want to point out about this technique which I haven't pointed out before. As usual, I use two tools while doing this kind of chipping, metal tweezers and my hobby knife. Physical chipping is a lot of fun to do, and personally it's my favorite weathering step. It's easier to achieve a realistic effect than by painting on chips for somewhat obvious reasons. I think you can figure out why. Because I put the decals on before chipping, I can chip them up at the same time as the paint. But these decals were thicker than usual, which made them harder to chip, but also harder to scrape off the excess carrier film. If I sprayed a coat of semi-gloss before decals, I probably could have done this without worrying about the actual paint, which I'll keep in mind for future projects. I used to do this until I found it was unnecessary 9 times out of 10, but I guess I'll have to do this at least for the kids that I picked up these newer decals for. On the back of the knees, there are areas where the knee armor rubbed off the purple. If this were a clean build, it would be a problem, but with physical chipping, I can turn this into something stylized. It is plenty realistic too, since I'm just continuing the curves along the rest of the knee joint. I'm also scraping off paint from areas of the frame where I think pieces of metal would rub against each other. I do leave some streaks of purple, which wouldn't happen if two pieces of metal rubbed against each other constantly, there wouldn't be any paint left, but that is the stylistic bit. With weathering like this, I can take an aspect of acrylics often considered to be a weakness and play it to my advantage. Oddly enough, this makes it pretty flexible. I'm also doing some edge wear using the flat end of my knife. When doing edge wear, it's important not to get carried away and whenever I do this effect, I make sure not to rub off the paint along an entire edge, but instead split it up to make it more realistic and interesting. I'm also trying to avoid making mirror images of the weathering as well for these reasons.
I'm painting the weapons at a much earlier point in the build than I usually do which isn't typical, but if you've seen me paint weapons before, which is almost every video I make, you'll probably recognize these colors, they are basalt grey and green grey, and are very much so Saku farm classics. They are my standard weapon colors regardless of timeline or kit, the green grey goes super well with the rest of the kit colors, I knew I wanted some sort of green for the bayonets since the Begra Beo has green blades in the anime, although those are more like a seafoam green which wouldn't really go with the military aesthetic I've got going on. I'll then add some decals and do physical chipping. I sprayed a light coat of Mr. Super Clear Semi Gloss and I'll be doing a pin wash. This was a pretty hard step to do on video just because I'm applying black over dark grey. Speaking of which, the effect is pretty subtle over the German grey but does show up quite well over the lighter grey and purple. This kit has a lot of detail to highlight with the wash which makes for a tedious yet rewarding process. Just like the Lubris, this kit isn't very tall and stands a little shorter than that kit does. As usual, I'm applying this with a really fine brush and sort of drawing along the details which is made so much easier with a semi-gloss underneath. The wash I'm using is pre-made which does have some limitations with colors, but this stuff is at the perfect consistency where it'll flow into a detail but not out of one. Another thing you can do with the wash is paint it over an entire surface to do some shading. I found that this only really works on details in the center of a surface and helps give the illusion that they are much farther backwards from the viewer. I use this on a lot of the frame parts since they are the innermost areas. The way I apply a wash on the weapons is the exact opposite of a pin wash. I'll cover the entire surface in wash and then rub off the excess with a paper towel, and if I remove too much paint, I'll add more in a pin wash sort of way. The result is a messier effect which I prefer on weapons, since there's less going on mechanically. Although weapons maintenance is crucial, I would think mechanics put more care into maintaining a giant flying robot since there is more potential for malfunction. It's time to add a bit of a patina, and much like the wash, the darker colors complicates things. Like the black wash, these didn't show up that well on the German grey, but this brings up a point regarding weathering black. If you really want weathering to show up on black, you have to go super light. While this does ensure that your weathering shows up on black, it can really start to make the appearance faded if you aren't careful. This isn't what I want, and I'm fine with subtlety. I'm using a light grey wash for this which is a new experience, but since it doesn't really show up, I can't provide anything conclusive about it. As usual, this effect in general is a subtle one, and an effect you have to build up with several passes. I'll then do some speckling with brown and black washes, and afterwards spray the entire kit with the coat of Mr. Super Clear Flat. And with that, the kit is done. Here's the high grade Begware Bayou in the bare plastic. And here's the high grade Begware Bayou with a little work. I want to thank you all for watching, sorry the start to this series was delayed, but I am glad with how this kit turned out. The two greys look super sleek, even if they made a lot of the weathering seem non-existent. And I think I really captured the hunter vibe nicely. Just want to let y'all know that I will be taking a quick break from these Witcher Mercury kits to focus on some core Zaku content, but I am super excited to pick up this series where I left off with kit number 3, being of course the Aerial. I've got a lot of kits to work through in this series, and if you have any suggestions on paint schemes, let me know. If you like the video, consider supporting the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video, whenever that is.